If you're looking for the best laptop for music production, then you found the perfect video. We're gonna discuss thin and light laptops all the way up to gaming laptops and even the Apple MacBook Pro lineup so you know exactly what laptop you need for your specific music production workflow. There's a lot of options in front of you and all of the different components all weigh into what you'll be able to accomplish in your workflow. So make sure you hang on till the end of this video because you're gonna to wanna to catch all this information to make sure you make the right purchase. Now we're gonna start out in the budget category and work our way all the way up to high end, but I first wanna discuss the components. So we're gonna kick it off with the CPU, the central processing unit. When it comes to the CPU, high single core performance is a top priority. The reason is sequential serial processing. When it comes to a DAW, it is not possible to parallel process instruments and effects that are on the same channel. So you have to wait for one instrument to finish before the next instrument will be processed on that singular channel. So it needs a lot of single core performance. If you have a CPU with high multi-core performance, that would be great because you could process multiple effects and channels at the same time. Now let's say you have three channels running inside of the software, but one of these channels gets backed up because the effect that you have on that instrument is a lot heavier than the other effects on the the other two instruments. Well, immediately your whole process is going to back up because this one channel isn't powerful enough and it will slow down the entire software. And so by having strong single core performance, you'll be able to have each of those channels be running smoothly. As soon as you trade more single core performance for more multi-core performance, you risk running into a bottleneck in your system. So even if you're utilizing multiple cores known as parallel processing, your system still could bottleneck, which creates a lack of efficiency. Now, at a bare bones minimum regarding processors, anything above an i5-1235U or the Ryzen 5 6600U or the Apple M1 chip is a great starting point for a music production laptop, but I would not recommend any Anything lower than those three CPU levels. So Lenovo sent over these three Lenovo Legion 5 Pros and as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers we're gonna kick off a giveaway to celebrate passing the 100,000 subscriber mark. The faster we get there the sooner the giveaway is coming your way so make sure you subscribe to the channel share this video and drop a comment of how you would use a Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. Now the next thing coming up on your screen is the CPUs with the highest single core performance. Starting at the i9-12900H, that is probably the best CPU money could buy for a music production laptop. Followed up by the i7-12700H and then the Apple M1 Max and M1 Pro. Now the next one is the i7-1260P. This could bottleneck your workflow a little bit because normally these laptops are more thin and light ultrabooks. They won't have as many ports and connectivity. And so when you're trying to hook in devices to your laptop, you may find it more limited. From there, you have the Apple MacBook Pro with the M2 chip. And then we follow down the line with the i5 from Intel and then the Ryzen processors come in. The reason the Ryzen processors are even below some of the mobile processors from Intel is because Ryzen processors are a lot stronger in multi-core performance than they are in single core performance. The best processors for single core performance are going to be the Intel processors and the Apple processors followed up by the AMD Ryzen processors. Now moving on, we're gonna look at random access memory or better known as RAM or just memory. Every time you open an application, it is going to pull away from your RAM. So for instance, let's say you have eight gigs of RAM in your system. I don't recommend that for music production. I recommend at least 16, but let's just play this game and say you have eight. As soon as you boot your PC, you're gonna use anywhere from a half a gig to a gig of RAM to even just run your PC. From there, if you open up something like Ableton Live or you open up Pro Tools or FL Studio, you're gonna be using anywhere from three to eight gigs of RAM if you're taking it easy, if you're not pushing your software really hard. From there, let's say you need to do a little research or go download some files you're gonna jump on a Google Chrome using your web browser. There, you'll be using two to five gigs of RAM. So you can see how easily you already ran out of eight gigs of RAM. So that's why I recommend 16 at a minimum. 32 is a really strong sweet spot in my opinion, but a lot of more thin and light ultrabooks only can come with 16 gigs of RAM. I would not get a thin and light ultrabook with eight gigs. I would start at 16 at a minimum for any laptop, but I just kind of put that out there because I know some of the Ultrabooks can only get 16, but I would personally recommend 32 if your budget allows. Now without sufficient RAM, your apps may freeze or flat out crash on you. So RAM is very important. It's something you're gonna wanna make sure you have enough of in your music production laptop. 
Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the graphics processing unit. Do you need a graphics processing unit, a GPU, for music production? The answer is actually sometimes. Some plugins do require GPU support. Now, these could be run on the CPU's onboard graphics. For instance, this is known as Intel Iris Xe graphics on Intel or Radeon graphics on AMD Ryzen. And so these could run those plugins. However, if you're using a plugin that's very graphics heavy for whatever reason, maybe if it says it on you know the instruction manual or when you download it or in the system requirements of that plugin, do a little research. Maybe find out if it's for a certain reason it needs a lot of graphics computing. In that case, you would want to get a dedicated GPU like is found in a gaming laptop, something like an NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti or 3060, or on the AMD Radeon side, something like an RX 6700S that's found in the Asus Zephyrus G14. So these can be very important if you're using certain plugins that require graphical processing. Now, one thing that you will want to know, whether you're using a plugin that requires GPU support or it doesn't, is if you want to run multiple external monitors, the GPU will make sure to take on that role and not waste your CPU performance running your external monitors. So let's say you have a studio setup where you have two or three external monitors that are gonna plug into your laptop. I would definitely recommend a dedicated GPU because if you do not, you're gonna use a lot of CPU performance to display your image up onto those screens and it's gonna really bottleneck your system. So GPU performance is important for plugins and for external monitors. Next up is storage. Now you can get solid state drives or you can get hard disk drives. Now hard disk drives are really kind of going out of style in my opinion and by style I mean it's becoming so affordable to use solid state drives that hard disk drives are just less popular. They are still more affordable, um, but SSD is becoming affordable as well. Now, the way I kind of communicate this to people is your SSD is gonna be more reliable and it's gonna be faster. Um, the thing is, when it comes to a hard disk drive, you literally have a disk that spins and you have a mechanical arm and a little digital eye that reads the information off that disk. You can actually see an example image on the slide in front of you. So if I were to go and I were gonna give a live example of this, basically what I would do is I would have a word I want to know more about. I want to know about the word optimism. So how I would do that is I would get up from where I'm sitting, walk over to my bookshelf, pick up the thesaurus, and look up what the word optimism means and maybe some more uh, words to express being optimistic. Whereas if I had a solid state drive, I would pull out my cell phone, type in the word optimism definition or optimism synonyms, and I click enter and immediately have that word in front of me. So it's just more like grab it right away versus like physically getting up and looking for the information. It's the best explanation I've been able to provide and people are usually pretty satisfied with it. Hope it satisfies your curiosity. Now, next thing I wanna discuss, and I think this is probably the most important part of this video, is going to be discussing your workflow. What is your workflow in regards to your music production? Let's give an example. Here is a simple workflow. One to two microphones, some reverb, one virtual instrument, and maybe a physical instrument. This would be totally capable with a thin and light ultrabook. Okay, so we're gonna get into the lineups here in just a minute, show you some options, but something like a Thin and Light Ultrabook with a low TDP processor, that will be totally fine. Something like the i5-1235U or the Ryzen 7 6800U, totally be able to process that without an issue. Next, we're gonna get into a little bit more complicated workflow. Let's say we have two to four microphones, we've got some reverb, some synth, some effects, and three to five virtual instruments. You're gonna want a gaming laptop, or you're gonna want the MacBook Pro. So either the M1 Pro or the M1 Max. Now, here's the issue you run into with a gaming laptop. They're gonna be kind of loud. They're gonna have fan noise. They're gonna run kind of hot. So if you want your laptop right in the midst of your studio, your microphone may in fact pick up the fan noise. So that's something to be aware of. Whereas with the MacBook Pro, they run almost silent. They are very quiet. They are incredible machines that run extremely quiet. Another thing to consider with the gaming laptop, if you wanna get full performance out of the gaming laptop, most Intel and Ryzen equipped gaming laptops, you have to be plugged into your charger cord in order to get full performance. The MacBook Pros, however, do not require that. You can get full performance out of the CPU and the onboard graphics not being plugged into a charger. So it creates a better mobile studio experience for you. 
All right, let's get into the last category, which would be more complex. We're talking five plus microphones, reverb, synth, effects, and five plus virtual instruments. This again would be a powerful gaming laptop or a powerful MacBook Pro. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the laptop examples and discuss what we're looking at here from the simple to the complex workflows. The entry level laptops would be great for simple workflows. They're gonna be quiet laptops. You're gonna be able to use them inside of your studio. They're not necessarily the cheapest laptops. I don't want you to use the cheapest laptop. As I recommended in the beginning, anything lower than the i5-12-35U or say an i5-12-40P is really gonna be the base level that I'm gonna recommend for you. As you even see on this list here, the first laptop, the HP Pavilion Plus has eight gigs of RAM. I actually really wouldn't recommend this laptop. The reason being is I think you should start with 16 gigs of RAM, but I'm just trying to show you that the price point of a laptop that's good for music production is above that $650 price point. It just, it's what you will have to pay in order to get a laptop that has great performance, doesn't bog down, doesn't freeze, doesn't crash. It is important to make sure you're spending the money to get a good laptop for your workflow. So these two laptops right off the bat, I honestly would avoid recommending them just because they have eight gigs of RAM. If you found those two laptops in a 16 gig variant, I would totally go for it. And next here on the list, you can see we have the Acer Aspire 3. It has 16 gigs of RAM. It has an i5-1235U. That would be a great pick at about $750. Moving up the list here, you see we have a few different configurations of the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 360. This again would be great for that simple workflow. And then of course the Lenovo ThinkBook S13. i7-1260P, 16 gigs of RAM, plenty of power for that simple studio workflow. All right, next up on the list, we have music production laptops that are more of the entry level, moving up toward mid-range, but not quite mid-range. We're still under that $1,200 price point. And to me, anything over $1,200 is where I go, okay, that's mid-level, mid-range price point. As you can see, everything on this lineup has 16 gigs. We're starting to get into those more powerful H series processors, which is moving into more of the complicated, but not complex. So all of these laptops here on this lineup, excluding the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5i and the Acer Swift X, I would say would be really good for complicated workflows. They are, have H series processors, both either from Ryzen or Intel. So they're gonna have that little bit more boost in single core performance that you need to run that slightly more complicated studio. Now, the one benefit you have of the Acer Swift X is that if you're somebody who wants to use multiple monitors, you have a dedicated GPU. So if you're somebody running a more simple setup, but you have multiple monitors, that Acer Swift X would be a great buy. Um, now, one thing I wanna point out is that other laptops on this lineup don't have dedicated GPUs. So if you're somebody who has a multiple monitor studio, these would not be my recommendations for you if you're somebody who has multiple monitors and wanting to run a complicated studio setup workflow, okay? I hope this is making sense. There's a lot of little moving parts here that I'm trying to cover. Let's say this one more time just to make sure we all have it down. Simple studio, multiple monitors, that Acer Swift X with the i7-1260P and dedicated GPU would run that well. Complicated studio, only using your laptop, so no external monitors. The other laptops with the H-series processors would work really, really well because they've got that nice single core performance. All right, moving on here to the mid-range music production laptops. Right off the bat, the first laptop we have here is gonna be the Dell Precision 14 Plus. Gonna fall into that complicated but no external monitors category once again. Now, as you can see, we're moving up in price point, but we're not exactly moving up in regards to the dedicated GPUs. So I'm once again gonna take these laptops, the next four, the Apple MacBook Pro, the Asus ZenBook S13, the HP Spectre, and the Lenovo Yoga 9i, and I'm gonna say that you could run simple to complicated workflows with those laptops. Don't add external monitors yet because you're gonna bog down your system. We're kind of playing the tightrope between simple and complicated at the moment with these laptops. They're getting more expensive because they're more premium laptops. We started out in the budget category with some less premium laptops. Now moving on to the mid-range to higher end music production laptops, this is where we're fully starting to dive in to the complicated category with external monitors. 
Now, the last two laptops on the lineup there are still falling into the complicated with no external, but you got the dedicated GPUs on the first three. So the dedicated GPUs are gonna run those external monitors and the H series processors are gonna help you for that complicated to complex workflow. So we're starting to move up slowly as we work our way through these laptops. Next is gonna be the higher end music production laptops. As you can see, we now have powerful GPUs and powerful CPUs starting to enter the scene here. One of my favorite laptops for music production because it's thin and light, has a dedicated GPU and has a powerful Intel processor would probably be the Lenovo Legion Slim 7i. I. You got that i7-12700H and an RTX 3060. It'd make a great laptop for a complicated studio with external monitors. The other laptops you can see here on the lineup that would be fantastic as well would be the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus M16. You have the i9-12900H. Fantastic single core performance and you have the dedicated GPU for running multiple monitors. So those two laptops would be killer for complex music production workflows. The rest of the laptops on this lineup would be great for complicated to complex. Hope this is making sense to you. Uh, it's definitely a lot to take in. And so if you need to watch this video again or comment below, we'd be happy to try and help you out here. Now, before we move forward, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of any of these laptops, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now for the MacBook Pro lineup, let's get right into it. But before we do, one thing that'll help your music production even more than a MacBook Pro is tapping that subscribe button. We're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by Christmas. And if you just take the two seconds to hit that subscribe button, you can make some dreams come true here on this channel. I've been trying to reach 100,000 subscribers for over six years, and it would just be amazing if you can help me reach that dream and that goal. Thank you so much. All right, the biggest benefit to the MacBook Pros is that they are silent and they can run full performance not being plugged into the charger. That to me is a massive benefit when it, when it comes to music production. When it comes to music production, things that don't matter when I'm talking to an audience normally of 3D modelers and video editors is noise. When it comes to 3D modeling and video editing, noise is just a stinking preference. Like really, are we really gonna complain about your fan kicking on and making noise while you're trying to edit a video? Put on some stinking headphones. However, you, my friend, are in music production. You require absolute silence for the crispest, clearest, best audio that I can listen to that's why it really, really matters, I think. I think that's why the MacBook Pro is one of the best laptops for music production. I have been called a Windows fanboy many times because I think Windows are a better bang for buck. However, when it comes to music production, having a laptop that is silent is extremely important. And so that is the biggest benefit that you will get from choosing an Apple MacBook Pro. It's not necessarily more performance, it's a quieter laptop at equal performance. That's literally all I have to say about these because you're gonna spend more money, get about the same performance, but that silent computer really can make a huge difference. Especially if you're gonna have your laptop inside of your studio. If you don't have like a glass box, you know, a soundproof box to, box to put yourself in or your instruments in, it can be very important. All right, before I digress, let's move forward. Last up is the high-end music production laptop. All these laptops are the top of the line, in my opinion, for music production. So multiple monitors, complex workflows, these are the best bang for buck as far as very complicated workflows using a laptop for music production. They're gonna have a lot of ports, a lot of connectivity, and just really be the laptop that you're looking for. However, just like we discussed a second ago, they will not be silent. They will have fan noise. They will be required to be plugged into power. They're gonna be a better price point than a MacBook Pro M1 Max. You're gonna save $1,000, $1,600, $2,000 maybe, but um, you are gonna forfeit a little bit of that fan noise to get one of these laptops but you could maybe even buy a whole nother instrument along with this laptop than going for the MacBook Pro, which will cost you more. Comment below right now, tell me what your budget is, what laptop you're considering, and what workflow category you fall into, simple, complicated, or complex. That'll really help me understand when I make future videos, how to fine tune these videos more to bring you guys some more value. Again, if you're interested in the live pricing, you can head down in the description below and click any of those links. If you have comments or questions, otherwise you can comment below and I hope to get some time and get back to you. Been very busy lately, but I'm trying to get to comments more uh, and it can be hit or miss. So I'll do my best. I'll see you guys in the next video.